today we're at a guy's house and he's got some bees in his dresser. So he had this on his veranda and when he went to pull his drawer out to get some clothes, he got a whole pile of bees in his face, unfortunately. So today we're gonna pull them out and put them in this hive. And they seem like pretty gentle bees, hopefully. So let's take this back panel off and see what we've got. We don't really know what we've got until we're looking at it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? There they all are. This looks like a quite a new hive. I don't think it's been there for too long. You can see this really brand new comb that they've built. It's all white. And they've put some honey in it, capped it off. There's still a little bit of nectar in there. You can really smell the aroma of the nectar coming in from the paper bark tree, which is local around here. So to do a bee removal, we've got a couple of tools. We've got this barbecue spatula, best bee removal tool ever. And it's got a kink in it and it's got some blaze and it's got a big flat area. So you can kind of get in there and detach the comb gently. Need a serrated knife, a long serrated knife. It's a really good tool. And this is, I think this is a crepe flipper. Um, I'm not sure what it is. My grandparents had it, but it's an amazing bee removal tool because it's nice and flexible and it's long and thin. And then you just need a, some kind of jemmy bar, obviously to get into places where you've got to peel back things. Got another great removal tool, a dust, dust pan. Right when the bees are clustered up, really just gently scoop them off the comb a little bit. Pour them into the hive. And I can see some lava in here. I can, and some capping. So, just from what I'm seeing here, this colony looks nice and healthy. Just use a little bit of smoke to try and move the bees out of the way. Always trying to be as slow and gentle as possible. You do have to be very careful with the brood comb. You really don't want to damage the brood inside but sometimes it's just unavoidable. We're always trying to be gentle and not kill any bees, but it's very, very hard. And some casualties are inevitable, unfortunately. But um, this is far better to do it this way and do a live removal than calling a pest exterminator that would poison all these bees. Look at that honey. Beautiful fluoro yellow. That is definitely reminiscent of the paper bark honey in Melaleuca. You can see a bee cleaning up the spilt nectar there. The bees don't like open, open honey in their hive. They clean it up as quickly as possible. So we can definitely use that comb. You can see lots of pollen in here and some brood, some capped brood in here. So we'll rubber band that into our frame. It can be difficult to rubber band honey comb into the frames because it's so soft. So the bees will fix this up once they're all situated. Oh, just got my first sting. Just put my finger in the wrong place. These bees are really gentle. I'm pulling apart their house and they don't even want to sting me. That's really nice. So it is important if you're doing this if, that you put the comb in the correct orientation that you pulled it out because the comb does have an up and a down and a sideways. If you put the brood comb upside down they won't use it. And obviously you can see this honeycomb has a little angle upwards to it so the honey doesn't fall out. 
So as I said, the bees will fix that up. They'll stitch it all in. They'll make new wax. And we can put them in to the box. So we just go comb by comb, nice and slow. You can see back in here, this section of comb actually bends around the drawer. They've built it around the top of the drawer and it goes in. So I'll just have to cut it here. Try and pull it out from the back and then we might go into the other side and see if we can pull the drawer out. of capped brood and also some young larvae in there and also a little bit of pollen up the top just here. So it's brood mixed in with some pollen in this comb. And we'll definitely try and rubber band that up. Always on the lookout for the queen. Can't see her here. So of course we can rubber band an extra bit into here. But we'll put it in the hive for now. If we run out of room, we can get back to that. So we've got as much comb as we can out from the back part of the dresser. And so we've turned it around just to give us some more space. And I'm gonna open the drawer and hopefully the comb doesn't fall down too much and, um, and jumble around too much. But we'll just have to see what we see. Just going to do it really slow. You can see some comb falling down already. It is getting dislodged from the top, the underside of the top. So I might be able to reach in and just gently pull it out. It is tricky with new wax full of open nectar or honey. It's very, very squishy and comes apart really easily. So it's hard to get a grip on. So always trying to look for the queen. When the bees are bunched up like that, you can touch them quite easily if you're gentle and slow. You see I've got bees and honey all over me. But they're very, very nice bees. I think I've only been stung once so far. I think all this comb has come adrift here so we can pull the drawer out. A lot of sticky clothes in here and a lot of sticky brood comb unfortunately but once we get that into the hive the bees should clean that up there we go I'm just always checking for the queen just Having a look for her on the side of the box here in these clusters. Sometimes the bees will cluster around the queen. But um, she can be pretty hard to spot. There's a queen. That's the beautiful queen. You can see she's got a longer abdomen and her legs kind of fatter, so she stalks around and try and not let her go the other way. See if we can get her in this little cage. Beautiful. There she is in there. Now we can put her into our beehive and we'll just leave her in the cage for 24 hours. That will just make sure that if the bees do try and abscond from our box, 
that they'll actually come back, they'll miss the queen and they'll come back. And then after about 24 hours though, they should be settled in. Usually they settle in fine, but it's just a little bit of a precaution. And the worker bees can get in and out through these slots, but the queen's too big to fit. So a day in the cage won't hurt her at all. It's always really great to find the queen in a bee removal because you know that you haven't squashed her and you won't squash her and that the bees will be able to become established in their new home much more easily than if she was missing or had been squashed. It's also really great to find the queen because if she was squashed we may have to have put eggs in this colony to for them to make a new queen. But because they're such a gentle colony, it's great that she's still there and we've found her because we can keep those genetics going and establish them in our new box. You can see a bee feeding her already. The queen can't generally feed herself. She relies on attendant workers to do that, to feed her and groom her. So not long to go here. We've Mostly got all the comb, just got a little bit in the corner to go here. Got a lot of bees on the side of our box. So I'll just get my dustpan scoop and try and scoop them out and into our new colony. And then once that's done, we'll try and clean this up as best we can and move it away so that they don't smell their old home and they just want to go into their new one. And just very gently contacting the box the whole time so that nobody gets caught. That's a good chunk. When they're all clustered up like that, they will just tumble together. You can see nobody's got hurt in that mix of bees. Everybody's still fine. As long as you're really slow and gentle, they're usually fine. Oh, I just stuck on some wax there. Just had to carve it off. Be on my nose. <laughs> Just get the rest of the wax off. Come on, girls. Down you go. Watch out. Watch out. Pull the plug out so that they can get up and access the bucket. And as long as we make sure that no other bees from anywhere else can access this bucket, then we are very safe to feed this honey back to this particular colony. And we'll just get a box to go around that and then put a roof on top. So that was actually quite an easy and stress-free bee removal. Some people call it a bee rescue or a cutout. The bees were really, really nice. As you can see, I didn't wear a suit and I only got stung a couple of times, which is nice, just on my hands. And the bees are doing well and we'll check them in a few days. So it's a week later now and it's time to check back in in this hive and see what they've been doing. I did go in a day after I did the removal to release the queen and make sure everything was fine in there. We'll go in and see what they're up to. Oh, straight away I can see they've eaten 
heaps of honey in there. And they're up there still. You can see all that comb that used to contain honey is completely blank. What I'll do in a little bit is I'll shake all the bees off this comb and I'll just take it and use it in my wax melter. Use it as wax to make candles. You can see they've stuck things together quite well. They're festooning there, they're hanging on to each other and that's one of the ways that they draw wax comb. You can see how they've built up and attached to the frame. They've also attached to the rubber bands here. And they've started putting fresh nectar back in these cells. Uh, all this brood is still here. That's a really good sign. You can see they've knitted everything together really well. So I'm going to go through a little bit and try and straighten things out because they're starting to get a bit wonky and hopefully the bees will reattach them straight. So I'll shove that back in straight. I think once the bees get up to the top I might start snipping out these rubber bands. But until then you can see where they've meshed these two pieces of comb together and then another piece in the middle here they've joined these two and then joined it to the bottom bar of the frame it's really cool and clever how they do that you see them festooning off the top bar of the frame here and that's actually the way that they're drawing the wax in between these two um, pieces of wax so they'll actually join those up okay. It's also interesting to see the way that they've kind of climbed up the rubber bands to get up to the top bar of the frame. So I'm seeing eggs, which is a really great sign. It means that the queen is fine and laying perfectly. So the bees have stuck this wax to the inside of the wall. So if I pull this frame away, it will pull everything apart so I have to carefully slide the hive tool down the wall so I don't squash any bees and try and pull that wax off the wall. You can see where there's the bees have actually chewed the rubber band and it's come free. So you can see the where they've chewed it here all these chew marks. They'll actually um, spit these rubber bands out the front door they'll pull them out the door and drop them on the grass in front of the hive. So if I waited a few weeks, I'd see all these broken rubber bands out the front door. There's the queen. She's just gone underneath the ball of bees. Let's see if we can see her again, there she is. What a beautiful queen. She's kind of small, but she's very fast. Got a beautiful colour to her. So that's great. We've laid eyes on her. You know she's in there. Doing fine. This comb had some brood in it, obviously. This was in the bucket up the top. And they're all starting to emerge. They're all just a little bit wet from the nectar being spilt on them, but they're okay. The, um, the nurse bees will lick them all clean. Once they've emerged. You can see they're all emerging at once. It's really cool. There's one right here that's just come out. So I'll leave this piece of comb up on top of the brood frames and wait for all these bees to uh, emerge. And then I'll probably rubber band this piece of comb into a frame so the bees can reuse it. So we've finished checking the hive. They seem like they're doing fine and they weren't very disturbed by pulling their whole house apart and rehoming them into a box and um, I've shaken all the bees out of this bucket of wax here this dry wax and now I can use it I can melt it down and if it wasn't for this little piece of comb here with 
emerging bees on it. I would put the inner cover on and then the roof, but for the moment, I'm just gonna put the roof over the top. So these young bees have got room to emerge and then I'll come back tomorrow and put the inner cover on. And then that will be that.